Yes, yes, and welcome back to the official Sourcing with Kian YouTube channel. So you've just started working with a new supplier. This video is going to teach you my top five tips on how to get the best out of this relationship with your new supplier. Let's go. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. I'm going to spare the whole introduction stuff, but if you want to get to know me a little bit more, just check out the Sourcing with Kian channel and it will get out. You'll probably see some videos of so you know some more stuff that I've got up to. But anyway, um, I've been working with manufacturers in China for more than 12 years and I've kind of put together what I've seen, you know, sellers, uh, you know, in e-commerce and Amazon and Shopify, the mistakes that they've made. And so here's like my top five tips how to stay on top uh, of these business relationships when working with Chinese suppliers. Rule number one or tip number one, let's say, uh, always make sure that you work with verified suppliers. And that's like a dodgy blue tick uh, logo. And this is so, so important. Uh, and I'm actually going to show you live on the screen share how we can do this but just to give you a little bit more insight like you know when you type in a product on Alibaba you might find you know a thousand suppliers that show up for that particular result and Alibaba have like a lot of very good suppliers on the platform but also a lot of really bad suppliers but the purpose of you being able to get aligned with the absolute best manufacturers is that you have to make sure that the information that they provide is verified so that means that you know their factory location is verified the number of years they've been in business is verified uh, the number of employees that they have, the certificates that they have, the, the amount of machinery that they have, all that sort of stuff is all verified. I'm going to show you real quick uh, on a screen share how we find this information. So let's grab our laptops, grab a coffee and let's go and I'll see you guys inside the computer. Okay, how are we doing guys? Hope you're all well. Uh, for the purpose of this example, I've got my microphone in front of me. So let's just use the example of podcast microphone in order to find out the correct uh, verified information. So let's go podcast microphone into Alibaba and okay if you've seen much more content before I kind of show you my best steps in terms of how to align for top manufacturers so we're going to follow something a little bit similar and that we're going to switch the search from products to suppliers and then we're going to hit search and as you can see here we have I'm just going to move myself uh, up here so you can see the information up on the left uh, as you can see here we have 600 suppliers for podcast microphone now the verified suppliers are normally the better suppliers anyway so we're going to select verified and notice that 601 just turned to 133. So we just got rid of like 25% of the, sorry, 75% of the suppliers because we requested verified information. And then the other things I like to select for is uh, the markets that we're selling into. So North America and Western Europe. So let's confirm that. And uh, now we go down to 100 suppliers. And then I also like some ISO 14001 and BSCI. And if you want to know inf more information about why I select those, definitely check out my video 7 Alibaba Sourcing Hacks, uh, which will show you my Alibaba selection method. But anyway, we can see here we went from 600 suppliers down, down to 36. Also, we've got to select trade assurance as well. Uh, now, once we see, okay, these are all verified factories, and even the Alibaba definition is a premium membership for high-level suppliers, that's probably not the best definition. It's more to do of the information that the factory provides has been verified by a third party. That would be the definition that I would use. So let's just take this this top one here, uh, this uh, Shenzhen company. We can see here again it's verified um, and it says it's been verified by the SGS group. They're a very large organization for third party inspections um, and quality control. So it's a very trusted company. If it is a different company that would uh, show up here as well. So you can see here as, as we see these images they've all got the verified badge on it. So these images have been taken and verified that these are from the office or the showroom of this particular company, uh, which is great. And then see down here as well, this is information I look at on the company profile in terms of what year were they established. So they've been going for 10 years, they've got product certification, this is number of employees, it's their core products at our manufacturer, not a trading company. And see all this information says verified by SGS Group. Um, and then private owner, da, 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 da. and then this is really important as well, the main markets that they supply, domestic markets 35%, North America is only 15%, so if you're selling in the States, that's only 15% of their exports, uh, that's something to be aware of. And then again, see here when it goes to product capacity, 
the factory size, the factory region, number of production lines. The number of production lines is so important. Um, and once you've been to a factory, been to a factory for electronics or for backpacks or for clothing, whatever you understand, like what's the output per production line. Uh, but anyway, you can see here that information again has been verified by SGS. As we scroll down here, they have their CE certificates that's been verified. And again, this verification just means that the factory has presented this information and the third party has gone in and said, yep, that's correct. This did come from this factory and this is all accurate information. Uh, then trade shows, what trade shows they've attended. Uh, that's great as well. Good information to know. Um, there is another sort of verification factor that this particular company doesn't have. So let's go back to Alibaba and let's just choose another supplier. Uh, let's take the second one uh, because some verified factories show you the actual product machinery that they have. Again, you can see this showroom information is verified. This one says manufacturer and trading company. Um, and then the patents, they've got four patents that's been verified, got, pr got good uh, product certificates, they've got up to 100 employees, fantastic. This production flow, again, verified. And this is a different company to UV Rhineland, they're a German company, they're also very, very good. And it's great that we can see here, even this uh, image here, which is like the ultrasound testing, this, this like testing machinery, these images we know are, are real. So that gives me a lot more confidence that we have this blue verification next to it. And this is what I was talking about before about production equipment. So see here it says they've got a testing room, they've got four testing rooms, they've got a drilling and milling machine, they've got a silk printer, all this sort of stuff. Um, and they've, they shows you the quantity per machine and then the, this is all verified as well. And then more production capacity, quality control. Uh, this is the testing equipment, which is so important that this company actually tests their products as well in-house before sending to a third party. And uh, they've got a vibration tester. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they need that for microphones, but anyway, maybe they make other products as well. I'm not sure. Um, so we can see here they've got a wire bending testing machine. Um, Anyway, you can use all of this information at your own disposal for whatever product or category you're looking at, but it was so important to go through that selection process that I identified, then making sure that the information here is verified, and then if you want even any more clarification, you can follow up with the factory to dig a little bit deeper. So if they had a patent, say, can you send me that patent information? Uh, if you're asking about a certain type of machinery to say that, you know, what is the wire bending test machine? Can you send me some photos of that? Can you send me some videos of that? Just so I can get a better understanding. This is all really, really good information to have uh, on the inside of your factory. And this, and you just feel confident that this has been verified by these uh, larger organizations as well. So that's the sort of information I look for when it comes to verified factories and verified information. Uh, if you have any further questions about that, drop it in the comments below and let's get back to the video. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little demo uh, of where we can find the verified information, how to find those suppliers and what sort of information we've been looking for. Now, you might ask, okay, well, I found my supplier off of Alibaba. You might have found them at the Canton Fair. It might be a friend's recommendation. You might have found them from Import Records and that verified badge is not available. So how do I make sure that the supplier is a good one when I don't see that verified information? Well, this is a time that we need to make use uh, of, you know, this is similar stuff that we saw at, in those verified blue ticks. Now we should ask the manufacturers for that. So let's say like, have you got any factory audits? Can you send that to us? So if they've ever manufactured for a big box retailer, uh, you know, like a Walmart or a Target or someone like that, or manufacture for a license like Disney, you know, Walmart required their own audits, Disney required their own audits, they can send you those audits and then you can review that. Same way if they have any pat uh, patents on their product, that you should receive those certificates. If they have any product certification in terms of legal or industry standard, in terms of if it's an electronic product, how it's been charged or, you know, any sort of testing that they have, you should ask for those certificates. And you always want to verify that the company name is on those certificates and the company address is on those certificates as well. And you can even ask for references of, let me know what other com uh, customers you've supplied you know, in the US market. Can you send me some photos of your production line uh, of you making those products? Just the more information, the merrier, whether there be images or product certificates or videos of that particular company, uh, the more information you can gather, the better uh, sort of idea you can have in your head of, of who they are. So tip number two is never miss an opportunity to build a relationship. Now, if you've seen and build a relationship with your manufacturer, I mean, and if you've seen much of my content before, you'll see that I always hammer the point about building a relationship with your manufacturers. It's so, so important.
And because I've talked about it a few times before, I won't go into too much detail on this video, but here I've put the WeChat logo, and this is W-E-C-H-A-T. Make sure you download that application. And normally the best way to build a relationship with your manufacturer is just by going to China, is by visiting the factory, going out for dinner together, getting to know each other, having a few drinks together. That will fast track your relationship and you going to China shows how serious you are of doing business with that manufacturer. You know, you flow into their place of business. They're like, okay, this is a serious buyer. They're obviously not here on holiday. They've come here to do real business. Let's build this relationship. But, uh, you know, at the moment, with us not being able to get out to China, WeChat is your next best alternative. Now, you want to keep all the imp important uh, information like prices and delivery dates and stuff like that uh, to email or your Alibaba conversation, but your WeChat should be images of, hey, this is what me and my friends got up to on the weekend. Hey, we went to the game, da da da. You should definitely come out, uh, you know, when you get a chance, we'll, we'll hang out and then ask them, you know, what type of food do you guys eat? You know, do you want to send some pics of, um, of your Chinese New Year celebration? All that sort of stuff. Just get used to sending images and photos and getting to know each other. And then the best things come from those relationships. Um, when you need a faster lead time, uh, they'll be more inclined to do that for you. When you need eyes and ears inside the factory, uh, when you need to see a video of your pre-shipment inspection or a video to verify that all your production has been done, you have access to, to them on a video call because you, on WeChat because you've built that relationship with them. Or if you need better prices, you, know, you can text and stuff like that and then that's just so different compared that to someone who's just written to their supplier on Alibaba. It's just like, hey, give me your best price versus you like, you know, sending photos, having beers with your friends and stuff like that. You can slowly build that relationship and get to know each other, send each other voice notes, send each other videos, get on video calls to resolve things. So definitely download that uh, WeChat application, build that relationship, and that will put you in a very good way um, to get the best out of your manufacturers. Hey guys, hope you're getting value from this video. If you do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell, ding ding, so you can stay up to date on the latest of what's happening in China. And if you would like to work with me and my friends here, it's my friend Lola. If you want to work with us on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group coaching scenario and get expert advice from my friend here on sourcing products from China, make sure you check the links in the description below. Thanks, and we'll see you guys. Okay guys, tip number three. Find out what's the main market that they supply. What are the main countries that they supply? You can see from my dodgy drawings here, I've got the Mexican flag, the Great Britain flag, and the US flag. You want to know where's their attention going? What countries are you supplying? And within those countries, what customers are you supplying? Because it's kind of like the 80-20 rule, right? Like 80% of their production could be going to just 20% of their customers. So you really want to find out, okay, well, what markets, what countries are you shipping to? And that's important because then you can get and an understanding of what are their quality standards. So if 80% of their production is going to the US market and you're also selling in the US market, then that's a good thing because then you know that, okay, they understand the quality standards uh, for the US. You know, if we need a certain type of certification for a certain retailer, well, they're able to provide that because they've been supplying that market for many, many years. But if you want to supply the US market and they've been supplying you know, the domestic Chinese market or the African market or the South American market, they might have a lesser quality standard and they don't have the same sort of regulations on product certificates and compliance in the US market. So then you want to take a deeper dive into, well, can you pass this certificate and do you have this uh, audit on this product and stuff like that. So definitely verify where their attention is going, uh, who they're supplying. And another way that you can verify that information is you can go to a website called importyeti.com and I'll have that appear live on screen here. And I've done some previous screen shares on this before, so definitely check out some of my, my previous videos. My January uh, 2021 sourcing update video ha uh, had a screen share of me showing how to use Import Yeti. But when you, if, if your supplier is, is manufacturing for another customer in the United States and you have that brand name of that United States customer, you can type them into Import Yeti and then Import Yeti will show you who their suppliers are, how many you know, containers that they shipped, what date that they shipped, all that sort of stuff. So then you can verify that that factory, that, uh, that factory has actually manufactured uh, for those companies. So just use importyeti.com and if you want to see a live screen share, as I said, check out that January 2021 sourcing video. Uh, 2022, sorry, I keep, for <laughs> I keep forgetting what year it is. Um, right. January sourcing update 2022 video. I'm going to link that up above so that you can ignore um, the, the wrong years that I'm saying and that'll show you exactly uh, how to use that. But super, super important. I've also got another video called uh, Top 10 Questions to Ask Your Manufacturers. Uh, you might find that really interesting uh, and I'm going to link that up above as well and that's going to cover a lot of questions that you should be asking your manufacturer in order to get the best results. Now, tip number four, 
is confirming your samples before you place your deposit. And I know that sounds very, very basic, right? But I've seen so many, and that's just an image of a box and a dollar sign, meaning confirm the sample, then pay the deposit. Now, I know that sounds really, really basic, right? But I've seen so many sellers uh, who essentially just buy from one website and sell on another website. They buy from Alibaba and they sell on Amazon and they don't necessarily confirm their sample, they don't receive their sample, they don't test their sample, they don't figure out the flaws in their sample before paying that deposit. And then what happens is they pay the deposit, the production starts, the production finishes, and then they do the pre-shipment inspection report, and then they find all these flaws in the product. And then they come to me, they say, hey, can you help me out, da da da, I just paid this, you know, $15,000 deposit, but the production's terrible, what do I do? And I was like, well, did you confirm that initial sample? And they're like, no, no, I just confirmed it by image, or they said that they were gonna make these changes. I was like, no, 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 you have to have a final sample that you approve, that you're like, this is what I approve to go into production, I sign it off, and then here is my deposit, because I now want you to go ahead and manufacture 5,000 units based on the sample. And that's not enough. Like once you've confirmed that pre-production sample, then they do the production, and then before you make the final payment, then you have to get them to send what's called a pre-shipment sample. And the pre-production sample, what you confirmed, and the shipment sample, which is a sample from the actual production, is what you've actually received, and you should get them, and they should be exactly the same. And if there's not a 100% match, then you have to discuss that and figure it out before you pay that remaining balance. And um, again, I've got an awesome video uh, on the sample process where I talk about this whole thing in maybe like a 20 minute video, maybe 15 minute video in my warehouse in Scotland and I show you my whole process and I share with you my templates and forms and what I use, how to log my samples. So definitely check that video out. I'm gonna link that up above and also in the description uh, of this video below. But this process is so, so uh, important. And one final tip I would give on this as well is that once you start to do many items or many orders with that one supplier, on the production label, you want to have your order number. So let's say you've done 10 orders and you see from like order 10, the quality is a little bit different from like order three, but there's no way to verify that unless on every single order on your label, like, you know, the washing label here, where it will say like, you know, washing instructions, barcode, stuff like that. If that was from order 3572, I'll put 3572 on that label. And then the next order will be purchase the order number 3941, I'll put that on that label. So if I ever get a dodgy production, and I always keep one sample from every order in my office or in my warehouse. So if I ever notice a reduction in quality, I'll get a sample from uh, order number three and a sample from order number 10, and I'll put them together. And if they're not exactly the same, I'll ask my manufacturer, why are these two samples different? I've not changed anything. And I can even send them to a third party to get a test report. Uh, like an Intertech or an SGS and I'll see like, okay, is the polyester consumption the same? Is the cotton the same? Is the spandex? Is the elastin the same? And if there's any difference, then I'm gonna pull up my manufacturer about it, I'm gonna ask to claim compensation. And it's good that you uh, show this to your supplier so that you're actually showing that you're checking every single order. So just bear that in mind as well. Always put the order number uh, on the label of your goods. Okay guys, I hope you're still with me. Point number five, uh, also a very, very important point. Um, it's right here, I don't know if you can guess, this is an inspection report and this is a magnifying glass. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you thought this image was anything else, but hopefully uh, that was quite clear and I do promise for my future videos I will get better uh, with my illustrations. Now this is just to make sure that you always, always do a pre-shipment inspection report. We kind of just touched on that a little bit, but I want to dive into a little bit more detail. If you start working with a supplier for the first time, even if all the information is verified, you still have to do a pre-shipment inspection report. One, because it sets a precedent to the supplier that you're a customer that checks all these little details. So in future orders, if they think that they're gonna get away with something, if they're gonna reduce the quality content, they'll be like, well, there's no point because they're always just gonna find this out on a pre-shipment inspection report, and then we're gonna have to rework it. So if they were lazy and they didn't wanna cut off loose threads or they didn't wanna clean and polish the product to remove all the dust marks you know, before shipping it out, they're gonna make sure they do that if they know that you always do a pre-shipment inspection report. Now, once you've done a few orders with a supplier, you might feel, okay, I'm really comfortable with this supplier, I don't need to do pre-shipment inspection reports anymore. But just always bear in mind that when you do a new item with an existing supplier, you still need to always do a pre-shipment inspection report because you always want to check for any faults. Sometimes the suppliers make mistakes and they don't mean it. And sometimes we make mistakes because you know we sometimes supply the wrong barcode or the wrong hang tag or the wrong Pantone color, but we always have a chance to fix it in the pre-shipment inspection report because we have a full 
50, 60 page report of being like, okay, this is exactly what the goods look like. Oh, the logo's in the wrong place. What can we do about it? How can we fix it? And if you need any recommendations for pre-shipment inspection companies that I use, uh, just write them in the comments below that you need help with that. Um, and I'll post the companies that I use uh, so you can contact them uh, to get inspections as well. And j I want to give you a quick example of how things could go wrong as well, like uh, without your intention. So I was doing an order for uh, black military boots for a special customer. And what they do is, you know, obviously leather uh, is black. And then, you know, when they cut leather, they use a silver pen to do the markings so they know where to cut the leather. And so they cut the, the, the letter based on the silver pen markings, but for whatever reason, whoever was in charge of quality control that day, maybe didn't show up to work, that they were off sick. And then when they assembled these boots and then they placed them in the boxes on the pre-shipment inspection report, we noticed that a lot of these black military boots just had silver and gray lines on them. And we're like, what's this? A customer will never accept it. And we found out that that was from the cutting lines. But normally there's someone who cleans off those silver pen marks uh, before the goods get packed uh, into the box. But for some reason, that person wasn't there that day. So now we had like 20,000 boots with all these silver marks on it. Luckily, it was caught on the pre-shipment inspection report. So the factory went in box by box, one by one, cleaned all the boots, and then put, repacked, them, repacked them in a the master carton, and then shipped them out and did that all at their own expense because it was their fault. Now, if we never did the pre-shipment inspection report, we would have received those goods in the UK and we would have had 20,000 different boots that we would have to open, clean, close, repack before we could even send them out. There'd be a high labor cost associated with that. and There'd be a high time, um, a lot of time allocated to fixing something like that. So pre-shipment inspection reports are so, so important. Even if you've been working for suppliers for so many different years, uh, mistakes can happen and uh, pre-shipment inspection reports will always find that. Hey guys, so I hope you found this video useful. These were the top five tips on working for a new supplier. If you're wanting to find a new supplier, I've got an awesome video of my seven best Alibaba hacks. It's a step-by-step -step video walkthrough of how to find the absolute best suppliers uh, on Alibaba. I'm going to get that to play up here next. Definitely check that out. And if you want to hear more from me, uh, definitely check, check the links in the description below. Connect with me on Instagram. I've got my own sourcing Facebook group, Sourcing with Kian. Uh, and I also have one-on-one -on -one and group coaching available as well. So if you want uh, to ask any of your supply chain questions to me or if you want to work with me, definitely check out the links in the descriptions below. And I look forward to working with you guys. All the best and I'll see you guys in the next video.